Um, first, hi, I'm Chris. First question is, how many of you have not been along to a vision to business, business session? Have not been along? Okay, that means that about 80% been along to a vision to business session, which means that you probably will have heard about 99% of what I'm going to say. So in the spirit of that, repetition makes permanent. Okay, so repetition makes permanent. You will possibly hear the same jokes, I'll be asking the same questions, there's not going to be anything different. So if you need to sleep, think about questions you want to ask Ray, now is your opportunity. For those others who have come along this evening, welcome. It's great to have you uh, along here. In two, actually, you're really lucky, those people that have been along, that I'm not going to pick one of you to come up and give the presentation, because I think you probably could um, do a better job than I could. In terms of kicking off the discussion, these are the two things we think about in terms of framing an idea and opportunity, and in particular, framing growing a successful business. So on the one hand, we have opportunity, and on the other, we have discipline. And one of the absolute um, benefits of teaching engineering students is the fact that those that choose to go into the business space absolutely know the discipline side. And I'd say probably know that a damn sight better than a lot of the business students that, um, that we work with, including myself. And as far as opportunity is concerned, we can all see those ideas, we can all see the opportunities. But having the discipline to underpin that is absolutely essential. And that's why I think it's great to have Ray along here, because when I talk a little bit in terms of teams, it's essential to have a mix of all of those things coming together and something for you to, um, to think about. In terms of the model that we've been using in um, Vision to Business that, that we use um, in the conversations we have around entrepreneurship, we talk about the entrepreneurship entrepreneurial process as comprising three or four key things. On the one hand there's the opportunity that we've already talked about, then there is the team that pulls that opportunity together and makes it a reality, and the resources that you need to make that happen. And that's underpinned, I guess, by the founder or, or the leader. And we look at this model and it's three nice neat circles that are all the same size, and we know damn well that that is not the case. Uh, we have great opportunities, fantastic ideas, and yet often the resources aren't there to meet that, and so that's where we've got to be um, entrepreneurial as well. And the team is often something that's just um, emerging. So when is an idea an opportunity? So any thoughts in terms of when an idea is an opportunity? And for those of you that have been along to Vision to Business, you should be able to just answer these just like that. What are some of the aspects that makes an idea an opportunity? And by that, what I'm talking about is something that is commercially sustainable. And even if we're talking about it from a social entrepreneurship perspective, a venture still has to be financially sustainable. So what are some of the things that we're looking for in terms of making an opportunity financially sustainable? There's a market for the product. There's absolutely a market for the product. So there has to be somebody out there that is willing to buy your product. And as I've said um, before, really you have to think about what your customer is buying, not what you're selling. What your customer is buying is incredibly important as opposed to what, because we get so wrapped up in the idea or the opportunity that we have, and um, again, I, I would say that a lot of those people that have a technical background, you know, we can get so wrapped up in the bells and whistles, and actually people aren't interested in the bells and whistles, what they want to buy is the song, so to speak. So really important to think about what your market is saying. So it has to be attractive um, to somebody. It should be durable. You know, you're putting a lot of time and energy in. You don't want a one-hit wonder. You, you want something to, to be durable. It has to be there at the right time, and that's a real challenge when you're um, a market leader. Um, anchored in a really tangible product or service and adding value, whether it be adding value as far as your final consumer is concerned or maybe in terms of different points along the supply chain. And obviously, in terms of picking up on the idea of the market, what has to be uppermost in your mind is, of course, the customer. Without a customer, there really isn't a business. So then the second side that, um, second part in terms of sitting alongside that is really understanding what your business model is. How do you make money? You should be able to describe how you make money. It's because really, if you're not making money, yet you can survive for a short period of time, but you need to be thinking about what your, um, what your business model is. And there's a lot of different ways of generating revenue, and you have to think about what the most appropriate way is for your business idea. And that might not necessarily come to mind straight away. 
It may be something that you think about and develop as you start to understand that demand chain, the supply chain, in terms of whether you're working business to business, business to um, consumer, or maybe business to business to consumer. So some of the different types of um, business models you can see up there, and sometimes the case is that it's actually the, the bait and hook approach may be something that's um, more viable. For example, an alarm company. You, know, you get the alarm installed, but actually where the revenue comes from is the monitoring fee that you pay each month. It's the subscription. iTunes is another classic example in terms of, of really understanding what the business model is. Um, for any of you sitting out there with young kids, you know, that merchandise and collateral market in terms of, you know, whether it be the Disney's, Wiggles, Thomas the Tank Engine, huge ways of, of being able to, to make money and, and to think about um, your particular business model. So in terms of the resources that you have, basically our conversation there is that, as I said, that circle generally isn't particularly abundant. And if anything, that's actually a blessing rather than a curse. A lot of people have said too much money at the start, it's not necessarily the best thing that, um, that you want in terms of growing your business. So you need to be thinking in terms of the financial resources you've got, the assets, and, and one of the ways is to think about minimising and controlling those rather than maximising and owning. In terms of thinking about people, you might think about on call, on staff. So those people that employ and are directly in your team, but what about those people that you may have on call, or those people that, um, that you can leverage? and um, thinking cash last. So in terms of the team, the last part of the model, the team is very much around sharing victory and sharing defeat, unless you're the test pilot, and then maybe you, you, you share to defeat more directly. But look, everybody's... <laughs> sorry, I'm not preempting anything he's he sort of raised about to say. Um, but very important in terms of thinking about the team that you bring together. So relevant experience, a mix of experience and skills coming together. You, know, you don't want everybody being the same. Um, it's very easy to want a team because often you can work very well together, but you know, groupthink comes in there. Commitment, determination, um, adaptability. The other thing is about thinking, and, and this was the conversation that we had with uh, on, on <coughs> Tuesday night when we were talking about teams, people's different tolerance of risk and ambiguity, um, and people thinking, you know, you know, okay, they're helping out, but it's not a real job and therefore not having the commitment to what you're doing when your business is in a startup phase. Not having the same commitment that you have, because it might be um, your idea that you want to see want to see grow. The other thing is the tragedy of the commons, and um, no, this isn't taken directly from a flat that I, that I lived in, but the fact is that you have to do the work. You've got to put the graft in, and it can't be left for other people to do. And time and time again, we hear Tuesday night, other nights, you know, building and growing a business is often one of the hardest things that people have ever done, but it's also one of the most satisfying and, and most enjoyable, and you've got to put the work in in terms of getting that done. So just wrapping up, the kind of things you need to be thinking about, it's got to create or add value. A few weeks ago, you've got to be talking about the aspirin rather than the vitamin. You've got to be looking towards adding value, solving somebody's pain, so to speak. So it's about the aspirin rather than the, the vitamin. Solving a significant problem and a problem that people are willing to pay a premium for. And that's what we're particularly good at New Ze in New Zealand generally, is finding that niche, you know, that, that high-end niche market. Um, a good fit in terms of the risk-reward balance, as I said, and um, getting a good market margin and, and the money-making characteristics. So that's our brief overview, repetition for some of you, maybe a few new ideas for, um, for some others, and really, what I want to hear is, is the story. And uh, so, Ray, it's all yours. Cheers. Hey guys, my name is Ray Thompson, uh, Chief Design Director at um, Martin Chipak. Um, first of all, straight quick video, just so you yeah, know what I'm talking about, obviously. video recently released on YouTube. 